sample selection. So for sample selection, you need to think about what the study population is. It depends on the research question. So it might be the U.S. population if you're studying state-to-state -state migration. It might be countries if you're studying income and well-being, which you are. It might be students uh, if you're studying the effectiveness of instruction. It might be patients if you're studying the effectiveness of medicine. And the question is, what's your sample? A large enough random sample will represent the underlying population. And notice that random is a really important part of it. It can't be some particular group that doesn't represent everyone. And you can study an entire population if it isn't too large. For the population of countries, there's only 214. Include all of them. If it's not a random sample, or if you can't include all of a small population, then your results may not be representative and you may have something called sample selection bias. Okay, well, that thing is hanging out there. Sample selection bias. Okay, that's when the people or countries in your sample are there for a reason, like it's not random. All right, so here's an example. Private school students have higher standardized test scores than public school students. So you might think that, oh, well, those schools are better. But you don't know that because private schools might or might not be better at teaching but for sure, the students are self-selected, and they might be better at learning. Who goes to private schools? Well, it's mostly richer people. And so those kids may have certain benefits that even if they went to a public school, they would still do really well. If you could pull out all the kids from public school that had the same characteristics of those private school kids, maybe their, te their test scores are high too. Um, and it doesn't mean that privatizing education would make all students have higher test scores. Okay, so that's just an example, but a lot of things that you'll see in terms of people making claims, if it's not on a representative sample, then you want to look at those claims with caution. All right, so is there going to be selection in your country sample? Some poor countries don't report data. Some tiny countries don't report data. Um, for example, another example is no rich countries report literacy rates. So your results may not apply to countries that are excluded from your sample. You want to choose measures that most countries report so that you don't have sample selection bias. And in part of um, what you're going to do this week in lab is you're going to look at the countries that have the missing data and see, uh-oh, am I? are they mostly from Africa? Well, that will mean that my analysis sample, what I'm going to do my project on, won't apply to Africa. Is it going to exclude itty-bitty countries? Well, that's not so bad because they don't affect a lot of people. But if you don't have China and India in your um, data set, well, you're leaving out a lot of people. Okay, So you really want to think about um, whenever you're doing a project, who is excluded because the data aren't there. All right, and the general principle is that you want to be wary of studies where people might self-select into the sample like a study that looks at private and public schools. And you want to be wary of cross-country studies that include a small subset of countries or exclude some really important countries.